It's Wednesday, 16 October. Welcome to the PDB Afternoon Bulletin. I'm Mike Baker, your eyes and ears on the world stage. All right, let's get briefed. First, we'll look at a revealing report detailing the extensive infiltration of European countries by Hamas-affiliated activists, how they happen to hide behind a shadowy network of supposed humanitarian groups to enrich the terror group while fueling anti-Semitism across the continent. Then, Canada and India continue their diplomatic rift after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has expelled India's top diplomat and five other officials, accusing them of involvement in a campaign to threaten and assassinate Sikh activists living in Canada. But first, our afternoon spotlight. I want to begin with a disturbing new report that reveals how a large network of Hamas-affiliated officials and activists infiltrated Europe, leveraging charities and nonprofits to fundraise and lobby on behalf of the Iranian-backed terror group. The report, titled appropriately Hamas in Europe, shared exclusively with the free press, details the origin of the rise in anti-Semitic hate across Europe in the wake of last year's brutal 7 October attacks by Hamas that kicked off this current conflict. Compiled by the European Leadership Network, and that is a pro-Israel advocacy group, the report says allies of Hamas have worked extensively to use, quote, civilian fronts to enrich the terror group and shape public opinion. It singles out dozens of charity groups and individuals with links to Hamas, which have collectively helped funnel as much as $10 million a month to Hamas coffers since the beginning of 2024. Their efforts to spread anti-Semitic misinformation appear to be yielding results. The Free Press points to the election over the summer of four anti-Israel politicians in the UK, all of whom have called Israel's response to Hamas's attacks a, quote, genocide, while downplaying the actions of Hamas and other Iranian-backed proxies. In total, they identified five European countries where Hamas is the most active outside of Gaza, and that would be the UK, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and Belgium. Mark Sachs, a U.S.-based director of the European Leadership Network, told the Free Press, quote, It is essential that we in the West start to wake up to how deeply embedded this infrastructure is and how sophisticated Hamas is in taking advantage of the West, end quote. In one example, the report points to the Charity Association of Solidarity with the Palestinian People, that's a group in Italy, which has been used by a Jordanian activist to send at least $4 million to Hamas over the past decade. Since 7 October, the Jordanian activist has used the group to organize anti-Israel rallies in Italy and promote narratives that Israel is committing genocide. In another example, the report names 62-year-old British Jordanian citizen Majed Alzir as the, quote, mastermind of the Hamas-affiliated activity in the UK and Germany. His group, the Palestinian Return Center, holds a special status at the UN, of course it does, that allows its members to attend meetings. It's also used to, quote, mobilize support for the Palestinian cause in the UK and overseas, while also intensely lobbying the British Parliament. Despite the fact that German authorities have labeled the group a likely front for Hamas terrorists, Alzir continues to organize anti-Israel rallies in Berlin, where he's lived since 2014. Others include a man arrested last year by Danish authorities for sending $6 million to Hamas, collected through a network of supposed humanitarian charities. Hamas's tentacles appear to reach deep into Europe, and according to the report, most governments and citizens remain completely unaware of their influence. Sachs told the Free Press, quote, A lot of Americans tend to look at Hamas and think that because they're primarily in Gaza, this is an isolated and backward group of individuals. Well, he continues, it's anything but. It's sophisticated, it's global, and they have operatives throughout Europe and the United States actively working against the West's interests, end quote. Now, this is similar to Hezbollah, which actually has a much larger presence around the globe. Critically, the report warns that many European countries are being outsmarted by these Hamas affiliates. It notes that in the past, when these governments have placed terrorist designations on Hamas-linked groups or charities, well, the groups have quietly dissolved and subsequently reorganized under a new name, but with the same leadership. 
One example is the previously mentioned Charity Association of Solidarity with the Palestinian People in Italy, which sprang from the ashes of the Union of Good. That's a charity which had their assets frozen for ties to Hamas back in 2008. The Hamas affiliates pick up right where they left off, allowing the flow of funds to the terror group to continue uninterrupted. Sachs warned the free press, quote, They have innocuous-sounding names, but these are Hamas enterprises. All right, coming up, Canada and India continue their diplomatic rift after Prime Minister Trudeau expelled India's top diplomat and five other officials, accusing them of involvement in a campaign to threaten and kill Canadian citizens. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Afternoon Bulletin. Canada has expelled India's top diplomat and five others following allegations linking them to the June 2023 assassination of Sikh activist Hardeep Singh Nijar. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau accused Indian diplomats of orchestrating a campaign against Canadian citizens, a claim that India denies. In retaliation, India then expelled six Canadian diplomats. As we previously reported on the PDB, India and Canada have been locked in a dispute since Nijar, a Canadian citizen and Sikh activist, was shot dead by a masked gunman outside a Sikh temple in Vancouver back in June of last year. Nijar was an advocate for the Khalistan movement, which seeks to establish a Sikh homeland in India. India labeled him a terrorist in 2020, accusing him of involvement in an attack on a Hindu priest. Trudeau publicly accused the Indian government of being involved in the assassination last year. While the Khalistan movement is banned in India, it does continue to grow in Canada, where nearly 2% of the population is Sikh. India has long pushed Western nations to crack down on Khalistan supporters. On Monday, Trudeau announced the expulsion of India's high commissioner and five other diplomats, declaring them persons of interest in the Nijar case. Trudeau accused India of escalating activities on Canadian soil, stating, quote, We will never tolerate the involvement of a foreign government threatening and killing Canadian citizens. Trudeau further accused the expelled diplomats of passing information on Canadian citizens to organized crime groups, enabling targeted attacks. Canada's foreign minister, Melanie Jolie, backed Trudeau's claims, noting that the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP, gathered, quote, ample, clear, and concrete evidence linking the diplomats to the murder. Jolie added that India refused to waive diplomatic immunity for the individuals involved and declined to cooperate with the investigation. RCMP Commissioner Mike Duham disclosed police uncovered, quote, a significant amount of information about criminal activity organized by Indian agents in Canada, with over a dozen credible threats to those associated with the pro khalistan movement. In response, India's foreign ministry rejected the accusations as, quote, baseless and absurd. The Indian government expelled Canada's acting high commissioner and five other diplomats, giving them until Saturday to leave. Now, this follows India's actions last year when it ordered Canada to reduce its diplomatic presence from 62 to 41 officials. It's important to note that the U.S. is also scrutinizing India's actions after prosecutors revealed a plot to assassinate a Sikh separatist leader on American soil last year. The State Department confirmed an Indian Inquiry Committee will visit Washington to continue the investigation. Jolie urged India to cooperate with Canada, noting that if India can work with the U.S., it should be able to collaborate with Canada to resolve the issues and prevent further violence. And that, my friends, is the PDB Afternoon Bulletin for Wednesday, 16 October. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me at pdb at thefirsttv.com. And, of course, if you're hankering for a, an ad-free experience, well, you can listen to the show ad-free simply by becoming a premium member of the President's Daily Brief. And you can do that by visiting pdbpremium.com. I'm Mike Baker, and I'll be back tomorrow. Until then... Stay informed, stay safe, stay cool. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment, a really positive, nice and kind comment. That would be appreciated. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our daily updates.